look, I'd like to welcome uh, you guys here today. Uh, I'm Alan Rasmussen. Uh, I'm a prevention manager with Rappahannock Rapidan Community Services. Uh, and I, you know, I'm not big into talking about myself, but sometimes you do it as a connector. And uh, I've been around uh, 18 years now with uh, RRCS doing prevention work. Uh, have, have a strong connection with the Mental Health Association of Fauquier and Renee and everybody there. And, you know, one of our philosophies is definitely, uh, uh, you know, building partnerships, working together. And, and this is what this uh, training series is all about. You know, uh, Renee uh, had an idea and uh, we talked about putting together a, a resiliency series or a mental health training series. And, uh, you know, during the COVID uh, pandemic, which we're still in, you know, we were, we've been on Zoom uh, and, and this idea got created that, you know, we, we're not quitters. We want to do things. We want to be out here making things happen. So, you know, uh, there's been a number of training series created around resiliency, mental health, life skills, uh, development. And uh, so, and it's, uh, you know, I'm going to tell you, I'm just mentioning this. I, I collect data on this. And uh, over the last year, data shows uh, 2,650 people were reached through these uh, presentations, such as the series with the Mental Health Association, Germana, Lord Fairfax, Virgin uh, Virginia Cooperative Extension. So, you know, we're, this is a way to get out here and get people involved and keep us connected and at the same time, uh, develop and uh, learn and uh, keep our mind on some good life skills for helping people. And uh, so uh, Bridget uh, uh, mentioned when you see the, and this is great, Bridget, you're awesome with that. With the, uh, you know, she's the designer uh, of the presentation here. And, uh, you know, we've all had a hand in it, but uh, Bridget's piece was critical. And she said that you see uh, the plants in the slides that'll be coming up. And that's, uh, uh, and, and help me get this right, Bridget, but the plant represents us and uh, the need for, you know, plants need to be taken care of. Uh, so to tie that in with the uh, self-care, uh, and we'll also talk about stress management, that kind of thing, but taking care of yourself is like a plant. You know, the, we're a plant and we need to take care of ourselves, uh, nutrients, water, uh, whatever it takes. So uh, anything else you want to say about that, Bridget, or is that okay? No, that, that pretty much covered it. I just saw a, a, a meme that kind of just encapsulates the self-care theme is just remember to get sun and uh, get water. You're basically a plant with complicated emotions. So. Uh, I love it. Thanks. See, look, thank you for adding that in. It's uh, that's why I like to involve others. Uh, you know, you don't you get sick of hearing me, but everybody's got some good ideas. So uh, as we move, uh, I, look, I got to tell you too. I like the title of this presentation because you could have a presentation that just said self care, but this presentation with the title scheduling self care for 2022. There's a message in there, man. This is about taking action, doing something, making this happen. And uh, to me, uh, if, if you guys know me, uh, it, you know, not everybody does, but I'm big on the resiliency mindset, you know, taking charge, making things happen. And, uh, you know, so the, in a piece of that is definitely scheduling self-care, avoiding burnout, all this ties in. There's a lot of talks about what it looks like and all this other stuff, but this is about doing something about it. And so I like that concept of, of making things happen. So anyway, uh, and hey, I like this other, uh, one of my uh, mantras here is uh, making the most in 2022. You know, I'm carrying that one uh, on my, I'm gonna get a t-shirt with, with that on it as well. So anyway, well, let me uh, do one thing here with the uh, slides. You know, usually uh, I want to mention this, uh, and I'm heartbroken today, really, because uh, usually Renee Nord and I do these presentations together, and my good buddy Renee is under the weather. And, uh, you know, so here's a teamwork concept. She said, hey, can you handle doing this on your own? I said, look, I'm going to do it. I'll do my best and we'll move forward. So, uh, you know, I'm going to be doing it. And I told her I'm going to be doing it with her in my heart. 
uh, with my concern for her and uh, my love for her. Renee is fantastic. She is uh, an incredible person. So, uh, so uh, that's all I can say. I'm going to move forward with uh, her spirit inside of me. And uh, so anyway, uh, you know, when you look at this slide here, the importance of self-care, uh, and it says for stress management, you know, and now you're going to hear me talk a lot of times, you know, it, the people do have stress. We're going to talk about that later. I also like this concept of taking charge, you know, do what you're responsible for, uh, do what's important to you, use your energy to do that, but always st stop a little bit, rest and recover and take care of yourself. So, you know, as we talk, let's talk about some of the basics of uh, uh, self-care uh, for stress management. And so, uh, you know, a basic piece here is uh, what is stress? You know, a mental and physical state that is triggered by circumstances that are not ideal. Okay, just a little bit of uh, foundational information. A physical manifestation of of when we are feeling overwhelmed and unable to cope with life's demands. You know, you, know, you can think about this and me, I read it and I can feel it sometimes because life can get, feel like it's out of control once in a while. And when that help, help happens, you know, we're, uh, it's that old emotional reaction patterns. You know, you have an adversity, a challenge uh, and we react in certain ways. So sometimes when you have stress, you know, there could be some, uh, you know, you can get angry, you can get a little down about it. We'll talk about that later, but, uh, and it makes it a little tougher to cope, you know, to say, hey, let me come up with an action plan. Let me move through this. And so we're gonna talk about that today. Keep in mind that stress can be triggered in people of all ages. Uh, it is not, uh, it's not one group it can happen and we need to be alert to this as a gatekeeping mindset people we need to be alert that anybody can experience stress and can be overwhelmed and we need to be alert uh, so it does not mean uh, it does not merely depend on the severity of the situation but also on the capacity of the person and their ability to cope with it now that's an interesting statement so think about that a little bit you know, some people, hey, you know, a lot of different people. Sometimes there's people can handle a great deal of stress, but they can ultimately be overwhelmed. And I know some people that, and this is not a put down, but a, a, I don't like to say a small amount of stress, but maybe a less amount of stress can really uh, work some people up and they can feel uh, uh, like they're, uh, they can't, they're paralyzed. You know, so everybody is different in their ability to manage situations. Uh, so, you know, that's why you need to talk about stress management, come up with skills, help people learn to cope with it and things like that. So, and everybody's different. We need to remember that we don't judge that. We just need to be alert to that. What is this person? If it's a staff person, a family member, a friend, what is their ability uh, to be able to manage stress? You know, so we need to be alert. So, uh, you know, what's the, the positive piece here? Stress can also be a motivator. You know, sometimes people, and, and I don't mind saying for me, uh, it, it can be an essential component to survival. Sometimes when I feel a little bit of stress, it kind of kicks me into being more alert and getting motivated and ready to go. Like it is, I'm in a survival thing. Hey, I got to take care of some business here. So it can it move me forward. Uh, and get get me more alert and energized sometimes uh, the kind of the opposite of what we've been talking about that so the effects of stress physical these are physical effects headaches low energy digest digestive problems and i want you know i want you to think about this it, we've been around a little bit i've seen a lot of this stuff in people sometimes people are going to experience aches pains and muscle tension neck aches you know when they're under stress they're man you know you'll hear more people saying hey i need to relax my neck my body feels achy uh insomnia you know people who are under stress they may go to bed with thoughts on their mind they have trouble just saying hey i'm gonna go to sleep and relax and be in my happy place and 
uh, go and they may wake up, sleep a little bit, wake up and that kind of thing. So insomnia and other sleep problems, uh, chest pain, uh, and then frequent illness. I don't know about you, but in my lifetime, I, I've experienced a little bit of all that uh, as I've learned to manage stress. Uh, you know, they, they call me a warrior now, but uh, uh, in my past, you know, uh, it, it is, there's limits to what you can handle to where it, uh, it begins to affect you physically. Now, effects of stress mentally, uh, memory problems, you know, I've seen this in people, and you know, the, the classic line sometimes is when people say, you know, I feel like I'm getting Alzheimer's or dementia, or I'm getting old and I can't think straight. And I think, what? You're not, that, that's not the case. You got a lot on your plate. Uh, when you talk to the person, see what's going on, let's, let's uh, do some of the life coping skills with the stress management, resiliency building, you know, uh, let's figure out what you need to do, make a list, come up with a plan and take a deep breath and take care of yourself. Uh, it can, uh, it can be poor judgment. You can make snap decisions. You can make poor decisions because you're not taking the time to think it through under the stress. There can be a lack of concentration. Uh, there can be, you know, these negative thought patterns. You know, I've, I've seen people, they can even be, uh, they get negative. They can be cynical. They, uh, it can change the way people think in a pot with those positive emotions. And, uh, you know, anxious or racing thoughts. You can see agitation, moodiness, irritability, or anger. Uh, it can result in loneliness. Uh, people's kind of shut down, they isolate, and you see that loneliness or isolation. And uh, there can be withdrawal and self-destructive, self-soothing uh, through drugs or alcohol, which really is negative coping skills. And uh, so, you know, I, I, I have to take a second to say this, and a lot of people know that if a lot of my work focuses on mental health, suicide prevention, recognizing mental health issues and, and doing gatekeeper training, recognize it, engage somebody and see what's going on. And when I look at this list of the, uh, the mental these are really warning signs, uh, you know, uh, signs are what we see, symptoms are what somebody's experiencing, and we don't know what people are experiencing if we don't take a minute and say, hey, look, it, it looks to me like you're having some trouble remembering things, and that's not a put down, but, you know, what are you feeling, what are you experiencing, you, do, you can do that with any one of those, and actually, when you talk about warning signs, uh, the, a lot of these are listed in warning signs of someone who uh, may be having depression, thoughts of suicide, and, and we don't know if we don't check it out. So I always like to make that a piece of what goes on. If you see signs, it's what you see. What someone's experiencing, you need to ask, what are you feeling? What are you experiencing? I care about you. I want to help. You know, so we need gatekeeper mindset, always checking on people. And uh, so, you know, when you look at the uh, uh, cost, uh, the global price tag of uh, burnout, uh, I've got another presentation I've been doing on burnout. And, uh, and you look at the, the price tag on that, 322 billion. You know, you're talking about work productivity, people needing uh, treatment, uh, on and on and on and on. The, the burnout is an incredible presentation and can uh, all this stuff you're, we're talking about here can be a, a stepping stone to somebody on their way to burning out. You know, we don't know. Burning out on life, burning out on uh, taking care of the kids can be for some people, work, you name it. And money, it's all in there. So uh, the challenge here, uh, you know, it, it, we're going to lay out some good information here. Uh, and I like this uh, heading, the challenge. Uh, it's like myths and facts, really. Uh, Self-care is selfish. You know, and uh, we'll talk about this in a minute. Achievement is valued. Self-care takes too much time. And, uh, you know, self-care is expensive. These are, to me, the challenge, the barriers, 
you know, I can't stop, take care of myself. I got to keep moving along. Uh, what's valued here is getting things done. You know, I'm going to look bad, uh, you know, and, and I don't have the time for that. You know, I'll get over it. I just need to keep pushing and pushing. And, uh, you know, and then, uh, you know, if I have to stop, do this, it might cost me money. I don't have money for that. So, you know, the, the reframe on this is that self-care is not selfish. And, and I think you heard me in the beginning, you know, this taking charge and then taking time to rest and recover. Uh, you know, I just did a presentation recently for a group and they wanted me to talk about how do you rest and recover? You know, so that's it. To me, that was about self-care big time. Uh, you know, we want to get things done. We want to be responsible, but we need to stop and take care of ourselves. And, you know, it's not always expensive. It can be simple things. We'll talk about that. But uh, self-care can be learned. That's why we're doing this presentation. We want to share information. And let me, I want to say this too. In the end, there's going to be time for us to talk. I'm laying all this stuff out. Uh, you know, I don't want to hold you captive here, but I'm setting the foundation. When we're done, we'll have a discussion. And, you know, when I'm usually with groups, I'll go, hey, get, what are some ways you take care of yourself? What are things you do? Instead of me giving a long list all the time, I've done it all, but it, it's good for people come up with great ideas. So self-care can be learned. Self-care is free. It doesn't always co cost money. You know, if you think about some things you do that relax you, that don't cost money, I mean, what, something you find peace in, enjoyment, self-care can help you achieve what is most important in the long term, and uh, that's health, satisfaction, and happiness, you know, and somebody, you know, somebody may, I see success is crossed out, uh, I'm one of these Socratic people. I could probably find a way to say, you know what, you might even find success in the process because you're taking care of yourself. You feel more peaceful, more energized. You can jump in and get things done better and, uh, and get it done. So anyway, I like the key here though. It's a uh, health, satisfaction and happiness, you know, enjoying life. I, I see a lot of studies on life satisfaction. And oddly enough, man, a lot of people are not satisfied with life. You know, so we need to find that satisfaction, happiness, and take care of our, and when we say health, we're talking about mental, physical, and emotional health, okay? Not just the physical, all of it, the big package. So, uh, you know, I like this, uh, it's, you know, when you talk, talk about taking action, here's a great sheet, the self-care plan. You know, and, and we're gonna send you this PowerPoint. We'll make sure you have it so you can have access to this. So to take, you know, me, I like lists. I like writing things down. I like going back and look at it and holding myself accountable. Uh, did I do this? It's right in my face every time I look at my to-do list. So my top three self-care strategies or resources. This is putting it on paper. What am I going to do? What do I enjoy doing? What makes me feel better? And, uh, you know, and again, I'll go back to that rest and recover, taking care of yourself. And it doesn't always cost money. If it does, budget it, you know, make the list. But uh, when will you do these? How? Will you get them done and who or what can support you? You know, so you, you kind of eliminate barriers, you build a bridge to that better future and you lay out the action plan. So, you know, just, to, just something uh, that's been tried and works. So give it a shot and, uh, you know, put it on paper, make it happen. And uh, so let's talk about strengthening connections with self, others, and the community. You know, I love this talk here, man. We're talking about uh, everything we were talking about before this started, you know, uh, working together, being together, making things happen together. And, uh, and that's where it's at, really, one team, one fight. So connect with yourself. Evaluate where you are and where you are heading, where you want to be 
Where are my goals? We'll talk about goal setting a little bit too. And note what needs to be adjusted. You know, it's just a reality check. Uh, I like to, some people, you know what? I, uh, I remember years ago, I saw a study uh, and maybe it was in a course. I mean, it may have been that long ago, but it said, you know, usually people uh, reevaluate their life and where they're headed and what they're doing majorly every five years. And I'm going every five years, man, I do it every week, you know? So it's, uh, you know, check it out, keep on top of yourself and make sure you're headed in the right direction. You know, time is everything. You know what I mean? It's a, it, 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 we're going to get things done. We got to get it done. So learn about your condition. You know, I love this uh, piece here. Any, I'm getting loud. I'm sorry. Cause I get excited. You know, uh, Dr. Baltimore, I, that's me. I started to get a little loud. So uh, learn about your condition. We have so much information that we can research trainings. We can take people we can talk to. And, you know, if you, you want to learn more about yourself, you know, I'm not saying become a doctor or a psychiatrist about it, but get on the internet, check out some of this information, educate yourself, and uh, you know, and then and, and there usually there's self-help information and there are things you can do, contacts you can make, but uh, you know, learn about your condition, make yourself an expert, and uh, so journal, uh, you know, write down stuff, make. Uh, uh, review that journal and keep track of it and uh, and then be an advocate and share your story. I love this piece here. I love it when we have people that can come forward and say, hey, I've been there and here I am now. I want to tell my story on what happened, what I did. And you know, I don't mind saying, uh, I have people that, uh, I do suicide prevention work. I have people who tell stories on a lot of issues and losses. So storytelling, people's experiences are powerful. There's no doubt about it. To hear from somebody who was here and then it went to this or they experienced a, a, a major loss and how I coped and moved forward through that, it is monumental. So benefits of connecting, you know, increased happiness, and here we go. Here it is, you know, increased happiness, better health. And those are all three, you know, mental, emotional, and physical, a longer life. Who doesn't want a piece of that? You know what I mean? I don't know about you. Uh, I'm, I'm in for it. You, I got gray here, man. You know, I'm, I'm looking, uh, I'm looking at the end run here. I'm trying to make the most of everything, man. So yeah, longer life. And so connection happens through concrete appropriate help, emotional support. I love this perspective. You know, when, when you can stop and think and do the reframe yourself and uh, look at different perspectives, you know, we may be looking like this. I love that Socratic talk and things. What if it, I did this? What if I thought like this? What if you know, so you, you broaden the perspective, you hear from other people. And uh, so, and you can get that through advice, you know, and, and you know, it, there's the yin and yang on everything. You gotta make sure you look for the advice from people you trust and, and you don't wanna limit anybody, but you wanna look for appropriate people and uh, validation and leisure activities, man. How many uh, find some hobbies, things you like to do uh, and break some of the, if, if a routine isn't working, break it. If a routine, routine is working, do it. Don't lose it, but build on it. You know, so uh, find different leisure activities, get out there, explore all that. And uh, do you have enough support? Ask yourself if you have at least a few friends or family members who you feel comfortable to be with. I mean, I, I got to tell you, this goes back to building those healthy relationships. You know, resilient people have re uh, healthy relationships, people they can trust, they can talk to. So, you know, develop those relationships and uh, give you, uh, they give you a sense that you could tell them anything. Isn't that nice that you know you could talk to them? It'll be private. They'll understand. They'll help you. Uh, and they can help you solve problems. 
They can make you feel valued. Healthy relationships, man, do that. You feel good when you have uh, somebody you can trust and who cares about you and you care about them. And uh, people who take your concerns seriously. They don't they minimize it, put it down. They take it in. It's that signs and symptoms thing. Okay, you're telling me your symptoms. I'm a friend. You know, uh, we'll work together. What can we do? Let's talk about that. And uh, I'm taking it seriously. I want to help you. I care about you. I love you. Community connections. When seeking community connections, get the right match. And, uh, you know, think about where you can contribute your unique interests, skills, and availability and make it count. Research and make sure you will get out of this what you intended. You know, I also like, uh, you know, with when you look at the right match, if you're seeking community connections, if you're looking for help, uh, think about that too, man. I've had people go certain places or I try to help refer people, but sometimes it takes a, a couple of tries to get the right match of someone who will understand or talk to you the way you need it or give you the help you need. If we're talking that route too, uh, we're offering up, but we're also seeking. You know, so uh, it, it's it, it's critical. Take your time and, uh, and, and get guidance in finding the right connections. So, uh, you know, uh, I love the word joy. You know, that's one of those words we don't say enough. But, you know, when you feel joyful, I mean, that's deep inside of you, man. That, that's uh, uh, and satisfaction, uh, creating joy and satisfaction. Just hearing that gives me a, a lot of hope. I'm looking forward to this piece myself. So studies show that laughing decreases pain. I love uh, joyful laughter. I don't like making fun of people or uh, doing it at the expense of others, but laughing, getting that joyful laughter, having a sense of humor, a good spirit, you know, it may help your heart and your lungs. It promotes muscle relaxation. Didn't we talk about stress where your muscles get tense? You know, when you can laugh and have a good spirit. I mean, when I say that, I'm just leaning back and my shoulders feel relaxed, you know. So it's, uh, and it can reduce anxiety. It calms you down, man. You look at the bright side of things. So positive emotions can decrease stress hormones and build emotional strength. And if you've heard my resiliency presentation, you know I, I spend a lot of time with positive emotions. When you experience those positive emotions each day, it improves your problem-solving skills, your spirit, your moods, and it, it's, uh, it relaxes you big time. And those negative emotions, uh, man, they can clamp you down and put a vice on your mind and your thoughts. So leisure activities offer a distraction from problems a sense of competence and many other benefits. You know, so here we go again at that rest and recover piece. You're going at responsible things. You're doing uh, important things. Take that break and do something that you like to do and schedule that. Don't just talk about it, put it, and we're going to show you a thing in a minute, but put it in your calendar. Make a point to make it one of your to do things. How to create joy and satisfaction. Do something you loved to do as a kid. You know, I love this, uh, you know, in that resiliency thing we talk about, you know, uh, kids can be serious, they can be, be playful. They love to enjoy, they can make, have, make fun out of anything. Give them a stick and a ball. You know, do things you love to do as a kid. Keep that mindset. Uh, do something you always wanted to do. You know, I've been thinking about that. I'm going to make a point. I'm going to put it on my action list and make steps to make that happen. I'm going to do that. Watch or listen to comedy. You know, if you can find some good comedy out there, watch, listen. And you know what? I don't know about you. I'm not promoting anything, but when I used to listen to those Seinfeld shows, I still do once in a while. But they, they make me laugh so much I want to cry sometimes. You know, each to their own, that kind of thing. I'm not pushing anything, but find something that you can listen to, and it is humorous. It can relax you, and you can it can distract you from things on your mind. Therapeutic massage. Take a nature 
break. Go out there, walk outdoors. You know, look, I like I said, I don't always like listing a bunch of ideas. And I have a long list. I always like people to think about it. You know, you can choose from a list too, but find something that you enjoy and brings you peacefulness and you, you like it. So ways to stay connected and think about this during COVID. I think, you know, some of the bright stuff is there's been some people that have uh, ended up being isolated, but on the flip side, we have found some unique ways to try to stay connected. Not that we can't improve any one of those, but you know, it, it, that's that uh, drive to do it, to get it done instead of being a victim and that kind of thing. So ways to stay connected. You have book clubs, recipe exchange, walk and talk, you know, get out, walk, talk. And you might even do that with somebody you're working with and cover something you're working on. But it's good if you can get away and drop the work stuff. Just get out, enjoy nature, walk, get the energy, those endorphins. And uh, you know, I saw something the other day. It was brought to my attention. If you do uh, a total of uh, 45 minutes 45 minutes of uh, exercise, walking, moving. It doesn't mean lifting weights or going wild with the stuff, just moving, keep moving. And uh, if you do that five days a week, you will decrease the chances of getting some major illness like cancer or something big time. You know, so just, that doesn't take much to do. Do some walking for 45 minutes, 40 minutes a day, do a little walk. Do, go up and down the stairs in your house. I've seen people say, hey, I don't like my house. There's three floors. Hey, use those steps to give you some exercise, you know? So, I mean, I don't like to judge when, when someone says that bothers me. I don't like to say, well, hey, I'm going to tell you, you're wrong. But, uh, you know, I always like to find something positive. Live, live stream events, video chats, you know, Zoom meetings with family. You know, I heard a guy tell me the other day, uh, he and his family, what they found to do during COVID, they have those Zoom meetings, but they organize them. Everybody has a chance to talk, you know, so one person doesn't override the uh, the meeting and uh, the get together. And then they also say, we're going to bring one humorous story or joke to tell the group. And so they're going, oh, man, what are we going to hear this time? But each to their own, each to their own, you know, make it get it organized and do the thing. And then virtual tours. There's things we can do as we're waiting to move out and get back to some of those other things. So sources of connection, you know, the public library, online support groups, they're out there. You know, we have the C Recovery Center uh, uh, through Rappahannock, Rappahannock Community Services. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, it's a place where people can meet, they can talk, they can get help. Uh, and it's uh, usually people in recovery, but they offer trainings and stuff. Hospice of the Piedmont has always been a valuable community partner because they do support groups. They do counseling. They also do some suicide prevention groups. I've been working with them for years. Uh, the church you know, each to their own, whatever you're into. But church, man, if you get a healthy church family, everybody connects. They care about you. You feel like brothers and sisters, a faith group, uh, volunteer groups. Join a volunteer group where you're around other people. You're out doing something you want to do to help make a difference for others, if that's what drives you. And, uh, you know, so we'll have a list of resources shared at the end of the presentation. And we'll share that with you, okay? And so let's talk a little bit about goal setting and uh, goal setting for self-care, okay? Not just to get work done and things like that. And goal setting for that is important too. But uh, so goal setting 101, to move forward. That's resilience talk there. We're moving forward, not going backwards. Let's move forward. You need to set goals. Keep in mind, goals provide focus. They provide direction, just like that uh, sheet we saw about what am I going to do for self-care? Here's a goal. Here's the steps I'm going to take. This is the direction I'm going to move forward in. Goals allow you to take control of your life. You know what I mean? And I, and I love this concept. You know, our time is our time. And what we do with it is, is up to us. 
And so the, the way to get the most of it is to set goals, take control of it. And, you know, if you've heard that time management talk, uh, I call it action management. It's really, you know, look for those time bandits. We'll talk a little bit about that. Yeah, but time is critical. It's an investment. If you view it as a financial investment and spend that the way you want to spend it, take control of it. So goals provide a way to measure your success. Am I achieving my goal? Am I moving in the right direction? Have I accomplished intermediate steps toward that goal? You know, you can assess all the way along what you're doing. Goal setting starts with what you want to achieve. You know, again, it's on you. What do I want in my life? What do I want to make happen? And uh, so then you set the steps. It's like problem solving, decision making, same kind of stuff. Achieving goals does involve hard work. It may involve breaking some uh, uh, routines that are not working, developing new steps to do things differently. And, it, and you got to get up and do it every day. You got to break out of uh, whatever routines you've been in to keep that from happening. And uh, so you must establish well-defined action steps. That's a critical thing. Here's the goal. Now, what am I going to do to make this happen? And you know what's cool? When you do that, you can pat yourself on the back as you do it. You can develop your self-esteem, your self-confidence. All those good things happen. And so set goals that motivate you. Make sure they are important to you and there is value in achieving them. This is what I want my life to look like. These is, this is uh, what's important to me. And uh, so I'm going to make an action plan to get that done. Set goals that are tied to high priorities for you. And always remember, motivation is key to achieving goals. You know, if you want to do it and it's something that's important to you, there's that motivation. And that will help you move. Uh, forward and, and accomplish those goals more than if it's like, oh, well, I guess I should do this. You got to be motivated and want to do it. It, it. That's a big difference maker. So goal setting, set specific goals. Your goal must be clear and well-defined. You don't want any confusion. The simpler, the better. I want to do this. This is what I want to accomplish. Put it out there in simple terms. And, uh, and then Put the steps. Goals must provide direction. So define exactly what you want to accomplish. This is what I want. When I accomplish this goal, say I've done it, this is what it will look like. This is what I will have done. You need that picture and, and you can and keep it in your mind. Set measurable goals and uh, you know, provide specifics such as short and long-term due dates. You know, sometimes people get lost in that and they're not sure what to do. and it, it muddles it up a little, but it is critical to set those time frames, due dates, and put a little pressure on yourself to get it done because that will increase the chance that you do it. Believe me, you have to have those time frames. By measuring your success, you can celebrate your progress, like I mentioned before, as well as goal complete completion you know and i'm a bug about positive self-talk celebration you know i got that done that step there i feel good about that my self-esteem my confidence i'm ready to take on the next step you can get energized over that so celebrate celebrate but keep moving forward and working toward your goals set realistic goals make sure your goal can be obtained you know, don't don't set something out there that you don't have much of a chance of doing it. You know, not that you can't think like that, but set goals that you can achieve and you can obtain. And when you set unrealistic goals, this really can erode your sense of uh, confidence. You know, you hear me, I'm about building self-esteem, self-confidence. When you set a goal that uh, really is setting uh, yourself up for failure, then that's going to undermine your self-esteem, your confidence, it's gonna, and then you're gonna, you're gonna probably drop the ball and give up. I mean, that could happen. So uh, try to make them realistic. Set relevant goals. Goals should be relevant to the direction you want your life and career to take. 
they must mean something to you that relevant to your life, what you want your life to look like. This helps keep your actions focused on what you need and what and want to achieve so you don't waste valuable time in your life. We're going back to that time management, action management, time bandits. Don't waste valuable time in your life. Stay focused. Set those relevant goals. Put all your energy toward those goals each day, and you'll accomplish the things you want in your life. So, you know, this goal setting roadmap is pretty cool. It's a kind of a check in, check out. Uh, you know, I, I'm starting my process. I'm on the road. Uh, am I making positive progress? You know, assess, 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 assess. Am I making positive progress? Uh, are the outcomes what I expected? And, uh, you know, the, and, and, you know, you can feel, am I moving forward? Is it working? And at any step, if it's not, you know, I like to go back and reevaluate. Let me replan let me check on what I'm doing to make sure I'm taking the right steps. Is this goal attainable? Is that why maybe there's a problem there? Do you need to modify uh, the course or direction? Don't be if it, don't beat yourself up if you're on this journey. You go, hey, what? Well, something's not working. Go back and have that determination, that perseverance of resilient people, and say, I'm going to go back, check this out. Maybe I'll get some expert help. Somebody will help guide me, and I'm going to revise my plan. It's not a failure. It's not a failure. When you learn and grow from whatever you're doing, that's positive, man. That's good stuff. And uh, so learning and growing, evolving. So don't beat yourself up as you try to do this. What is the way, uh, what is in the way of me achieving this goal? Is there a barrier that I didn't? see or didn't think about, uh, okay, well, I'll revise my plan. And, uh, you know, am I satisfied? Am I feeling the good energy, a sense of accomplishment? Am I moving in the direction I wanted to go in? And if uh, if not, reevaluate, remap. It's, it's not a failure. And, I, and it, you know, I've done talks about failure. You know, think about it, people who've done experiments, they fail, 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 and then they finally succeed. But every failure is a success because that's not the way to do it. Now we'll do this. Learn, grow, evolve. It's that simple. So scheduling time for self-care. Redefine self-care. What task can I take off of my plate? You know, this is a good thing to list. What am I doing? These routines. Is there something I need to take off of there? Gets, am I doing it for someone else and they should be doing it? Do I really need to be doing that? And so, so what task can I take off my plate? Who can I spend time with who will help me feel grounded? You know, this healthy relationships, uh, productive things. What small things can reduce my stress level from 10 to 7? We don't have to be thinking, hey, we're going to reduce that stress level from 10 to 0. Uh, you know, but it just make the move in the right direction and build on that. So scheduling time for self-care. You know, we only have uh, this thing at the time of uh, the myth management of time management. The, one of the biggest myths is, you know, it, it time is the issue. It's not time. It's our actions. We all have 24 hours in each day. So finding time, schedule time for a walk each day. That, that you could pair with a routine phone call, maybe, you know, blend this stuff together. I've done this where I think I'm going to get outside. I'll talk to that person while I'm walking outside for a minute. Make time before and after meetings to get water. They always talk about staying hydrated. Uh, you know, in any of these things, we need to make sure we're drinking water. Take uh, time before and after meetings to meditate. It, you know, sometimes people think, hey, I got to spend hours doing the meditate. No, you can meditate for five minutes. Take your mind somewhere, calm it down, relax, uh, make those statements, take those steps and, and recharge, man. Rest and recover in short bursts and then longer bursts too. Set quiet hours at home for solo activities and rest. It's okay to take care of yourself. I'm going to carve out a little bit of time this evening or the weekend, whatever, to do something. And it's not selfish when you say, for me. Something that's, I'm going to take care of me. That's okay. I'm going to take care of other people too, but I'm going to do something for myself. That's okay. 
And so here's a, I love this, uh, this weekly planner here. You can see what's built in with this stuff. You know, this time to, you got to build it in. A lot of times we're building in our work. We need to prioritize the self care, self help and stuff like that. We need to build it into our schedule. Put it on your to-do list, build it in. It's an action management step we all need to take. So uh, you get self-help presentation, journal, walk and talk with the ball, support group lunch, 30 minute refresh, get my hair cut, uh, screen off, you know, screens off, connect with family. Uh, you know, we've done talks about that. Volunteer, check in with a friend. You know, that screen stuff can be a major waster. I'm not gonna sidetrack the presentation here, but think about what you're doing with the time you have actions. What actions do I need to take to get what I need done in life and take care of myself? So uh, I like this too, write down your self-care mantra. Week one, I don't skip the self-care I've scheduled for myself, whether it's daily walks or a full day of rest. Week two, I don't make myself responsible for other people's feelings about me. I don't mind telling you, I hear a lot of people talking about what other people think of them. And I'm going, hey, look, man, you know, uh, uh, take it in. If you need to make a change, do it, but don't beat yourself up. If you like who you are and you're moving in the right direction, keep going. Uh, so uh, only my days and hours, on my days and hours off, I turn off my email and voicemail notifications. You know, the, the bad news about computers and email and all this stuff, it has given us more access to being at work, at home, all hours, all the time. And I don't mind saying I'm guilty of this stuff too once in a while. Hey, I'll jump on and get this done. You know, put the stuff off, spend time with your family or whatever's important to you, take care of yourself and that kind of thing. I don't mean to sound like I'm preaching. I, don't, I never do that. But when someone helps me, I don't say, sorry, you had to do this. Instead, I say, thank you for helping me you know that word sorry we should do a presentation on sorry how many times people i'm sorry i'm sorry no don't be sorry keep moving forward uh thank people build teams build healthy relationships and don't beat you know sometimes that's a beat me up kind of thing oh i should have done that myself or whatever we got to get out of that mindset so again i don't mind i don't want to sound like i'm lecturing Repeat daily, weekly, until it becomes second nature to claim the space for self-care. Take care of that plant. Get the light you need to take care of you. So extra resources for self-care plans, strengthening connections, and seeking help. Uh, here's a list of some resources that will come with the uh, presentation. Uh, I don't think I'm going to go over them all right now, but you can look at that and we'll send you the presentation. If that's okay with everybody, you can see it, you know, path, uh, volunteer, Matt, it's all on there. There's a guide, guides, but there's, there are resources out there. Believe me, we live in a great uh, bunch of communities uh, in the area I know I work in and they all have resource guides. They have programs and people who want to help uh, community partners that care. And so, uh, I would like to, on behalf of the Mental Health Association, on behalf of Rappahannock, Rappahannock Community Services, uh, thank you all.